Hey y'all, so let's chat. So I saw us last night. Finally, I needed to go see it before everybody fucking ruined it for me. I was gonna be blue. So I finally went and saw it. And after I saw it, I linked up with a friend and we had drinks and we discussed the movie. Um, he had seen it already, so he had had time to marinate and he's somebody with an opinion that I really like trust and I appreciate. So he was the perfect person to like break this down with. Um and I think I knew I wanted to do a review to the movie, but I initially, when I left the show, I was like, okay, before I can do a review, I need to get online and look up some of these things that I noted as being symbols in the movie. And then, you know what? After having the conversation with uh, my friend, I realized I didn't want to do that because I want to give you all my true interpretation and maybe the interpretation that me and him had together me and my friend had together but not i didn't want it to be i didn't want my perspective to be tainted by a million and one think pieces that would come up when i started looking up some of these things so i said i ain't gonna do all of that i feel like i got enough clarity from that conversation to be able to give you guys some things to think about as far as the film now if you don't already know if you ain't seen the movie you shouldn't be watching this because it's spoiler alert or you ain't gonna know what the fuck i'm talking about you might as well just not even so wait till you see the movie to actually come and watch this chat so before i delve into a lot of the pieces that i feel like were important to pay attention to i want to talk about like so me and my friend we came to the conclusion that jordan peele's movies are like a work of art and for a lot a lot of people don't understand art like as far as like going to an art gallery and like viewing actual pieces um and the reason why i think that comparing it to art is so is about as close as i could get is because like my friend asked me he was like did you like it and in the moment i couldn't really say that i liked it but i couldn't say that i disliked it what i came up with is i, is I appreciated it because I knew that even though I was in, I was still in the processing phase of what I had just taken in, I knew that there was a lot there to appreciate. And I knew that if anything, like art, that movie, it's art sparks conversation and it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. There is no just, oh, this is what this piece is about that may have like the person who does it who writes it who draws it it may mean something specific to them but for them a big piece of how art is so expressive and relatable is that a thousand people can look at something and see it complete in completely different ways and that's a beautiful thing when you really think about it it shows how diverse and how different we we all are and that's how i feel about the movie i don't I, after our conversation because i felt lost for a second i'm like man i thought i knew what it was about and then i got to the end and then i made it made me re-question my whole life if i knew fucking anything and so after talking with my friend i was like that's what it is it's the fact that anybody can look at that movie and pick out different pieces of it and say it means this or it means this or it means that and i think what i got caught up in initially is i wanted it to be one cohesive message and I don't think that it is one cohesive message. I think different parts of the movie represent different messages, different perspectives. And that's why I can appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the pieces that I saw. But what I will say before I do that is, you know, I was online and I saw a lot of people talking about how they felt like the movie was predictable. Now, I'm a scary movie buff. My mom was a scary movie buff. I've been raised watching scary movies. And even though that wasn't like your telltale scary movie or horror movie or whatever, I didn't find it predictable. There were, I actually ended up coming out of the movie being glad that it did not follow the storyline that I had in my head. There were, there were at least two parts where I felt like, oh, I did not see that coming. So I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. I think y'all just be lying and just saying the shit so that other people don't hype it up. But I didn't see the predictability. Like, of course, you know, 
like the basis of what shit's gonna happen because of like commercials and stuff but i'm gonna get into later on how some shit completely caught me off guard and i'm just gonna throw that out there but um i do want to delve into certain symbols that i feel like were in there that i think are important to highlight so here we go so one of the things me and my friends talked about that we found really interesting is the fact that the so the family dynamic it was not a stereotypical family dynamic and this is why we say that so usually when you see black families the dad is always like a cool like i'll beat a nigga ass type uh and the husband in this film was nothing like that he was kind of corny he was kind of lame um he came from money like you know we didn't see like this struggle from him we could tell he came from money because you know it's people own a fucking boathouse this man can buy a boat you know what i mean you can just tell that he isn't again like the stereotypical black father figure that we see in a lot of movies he was again he was corny and lame and you know that made it different as well as we see lupita being like the dominant strong figure and he's kind of like in the background kind of he a little useful but a little useless as well so i we we laughed over that because again all families don't look the same and in some families you do have the mother who is more dominant and the dad who's a little bit more you know laid back or um not as cool or whatever and then when you think about like i mentioned a few seconds ago with like the upbringings of the of the parents so with lupita the vibe you kind of get is that she was kind of raised by working class parents who may have struggled a bit um definitely didn't have everything handed to her and um whereas we have hubby who we could tell he ain't again he is he don't have that edge that hard edge that we're used to seeing and i think that it's interesting because it hot it can show and highlight the fact that sometimes when you grow up in struggle or even just working class not having shit handed to you or having to you know work harder than the next motherfucker to get something um you learn a lot of survival skills and in that movie that show like wifey she was ready she was taking on everybody and we you know you kind of see we passed that on to daughter because daughter was in there doing what she needed to do and again the dad he helped out but we really saw the highlighted pieces of mom and daughter kicking ass and again i think a lot of times we see that in black families we see mom doing what needs to be done sometimes dad is there sometimes he's not you know so i think it's important to show different family dynamics because all of them don't look the same and back to, to touch on what i was just saying is the fact that these survival skills when you have them they make you they allow you to get yourself out get yourself out of jams in situations that you could never foresee coming and so that leads me to my next point which me and my friend talked about that we found a little weird is the fact that the kids kind of were left to fend for themselves and like lupita she checked in on them every now and again but like they was off doing their own things fending for their life um and then they just happened to all kind of come back together like oh okay glad everybody's safe but i think that that can speak to this narrative that a lot of times in black families kids are forced to grow up quick and fend for themselves and figure shit out um and they are forced to grow up kind of quick and be self-sufficient at a young age and so i think that that's that's what i kind of took from that is the fact that you know even though we would love to we usually see like mom coddling a little more which you could tell lupita was a little overprotective but uh but when it was time for everybody to go handle their business everybody went and handled their business nobody was being babysat or coddled or anything like that so i think that's important to pay attention to um something else that we talked about is we can appreciate that all the white folks died first we ain't, see, we ain't lose no black characters and i was worried because i thought somebody was gonna go but we was vindicated okay all the white folks died first um something else that i noticed that i thought was interesting about the family is so the son he was the only person with a duplicate that had a physical difference like the burns 
nobody else's character really had a physical difference like of course you know they look a smidge of different a little rougher but he was the only person that had something super super noticeable that made him stand out from everybody else and um so when i was thinking about that then i thought about the fact that um in that scene where they finally got everybody together in the house, Lupita Shadow told the girl to run. Now, if you remember in the beginning of the movie, they were talking about her being a track star, going to the Olympics. And when I thought about the dynamic between the son and the daughter, what I took and what I came up with is the fact that sometimes our talents can help us or they can hurt us so in her situation being a track star and being able to run from her duplicate in order to avoid being killed that benefited her that helped her she got the hell out of dodge on that ass like so that worked for her however the whole movie we see son flicking his lighter and i was waiting on something to connect with the burns on the the the, the duplicate's face and this and that little boy in that lighter and then that's when that made me think of, again, the whole picture of sometimes your talents or your skills, they can help you or they can hurt you. So for him, if he keeps playing around with fire, he mess around and have an accident and lose half his face. That's all I got for that part. That's help you or hurt you. And I feel like for her, it represents help. For him, it represents potential hurt. Even though we don't see that happen, it's something there. And that's all I can come up with. So that's all I got for the family. Okay, so now I want to focus on the part of our conversation where we talked about the shadows or the tethered whichever one you want to refer to them, refer to them as because i feel like they use both terms so first things first when y'all say oh it's predictable i did not see lupita being the shadow the whole time i did not see that coming the fact that that girl choked her and stole her and threw her down there and switched out I did not see that coming and when that clicked at the end that's what made me be like well what the fuck do i know what do i really know i clearly don't know a thing so i thought that that was an interesting twist um and one thing that my friend brought up that i thought was super interesting is for him when he saw it he felt like that part really represented how black people sometimes will and this this could be applied across all races but this is a black movie so i'm gonna say black people how a lot of times black people they make it out the hood or out their circumstances that built them and then they leave that shit behind they don't go give back to their communities they don't go back and um invest in the same programs that help them like this is me expanding on that idea as you can see however i think like i he hit the nail on the head with that because essentially that girl got out of there she said fuck everybody else i don't give a damn about my mama my daddy i don't care about nobody i'm getting out of this motherfucker and i don't care she didn't go back for nobody nothing and so she was out here living her best life without everyone and so i think we see we've seen that dynamic play out time and time again like people make it out from the circumstances that helped build them and um where that their foundation of where they from becomes an afterthought so something else that i felt like was important to pay attention to pay attention to was when shadow lupita said that i she says i found faith and began to prepare when she talks about pretty much the process of um her getting ready to get everybody up there to take shit over right and to me i think that it really shows that you can hate where you are in life you can you can dislike it you could despise it and if you continue to do what you can where you can and again prepare to receive the blessings that you ask for not just ask for them but to do the preparation to keep the faith along the course then you will be vindicated. You will see victory and you will receive the blessings in which you ask for. As long as you continue to keep the faith and again, prepare to receive, not, and speak that, to have that, that faith that is unwavering, no matter how dark or um, bad things may seem, to know that you are here to serve a greater purpose and to rock through with that 
to stay focused on that no matter how bad things may appear. So I thought that, you know, once I stopped, once she said that, I was like, you know what? We're looking at this like negative. We're like, oh, here come these people. They come to take shit over. But when you really think about the underlying message of what she's saying as far as with anything in life, you people ask for shit, ask for shit, ask for shit, but they ain't ready to do the work or prepare to be in the place to be victorious. So another thing when it comes to the shadows or the tether that me and my friend um, thought was pretty interesting is the fact that they can represent people who have migrated to this country and exude far, the, like the people who migrate to this, co this country, I feel like they exude far more appreciation um, compared to people who are born here. And like Lupita asks, like, who are you? And when she said we're Americans, that shit threw me off. I'm like, that's random. Like, and again, after sitting with it and having conversations about it, that adds to my point, which is the fact that a lot of, you know, the, in the state of the country and a lot of racists and people who are prejudiced, they look at them people, you know, like they aren't Americans. When in fact, just because uh you aren't born here if you have a piece of paper that says you are an american citizen you are one so again that further adds back to my point but something else that my friend said that he ended up looking up and i was actually i had wrote out when i was because i was taking little notes during the movie of just like things i wanted to come back to and one of the things was the rabbits and so my friend said he looked up the rabbits and one of the interesting things that he found out is the fact that if you ha are on an all rabbit diet you can die because the meat is too lean and so hit follow me here because when i get into these modes you got to keep up so they're giving these people something to eat that they can't even live off of like you eat too much of it you're going to die so they're feeding them they're keeping these people alive but just barely and that to me parallels the idea of minimum wage in this country we pay people money like they can't you can't live uh, the average american cannot live off of minimum wage in this country so we giving people barely enough to make a living and to live just to live here um so again i'm drawing parallels i'm trying not to reach too far but that was the first thing that i thought of when i when you when i see them being given something that is eventually going to kill them so that's that's just one way in which that that can go because again to add back into the point of the shadows or the tether re representing um people who have migrated to this country is the fact that at the very end of the movie when they all standing together holding hands what did that shit look like up the hill a wall it looked like a wall and what do we know donald trump want to do he wanted to put this wall up and hear these people saying we are the wall and i dare you to move us so to expand upon this point that i'm still riding with we gonna keep on from where i was just at with the whole migrating and the lack of appreciation that born americans uh kind of have for our circumstances or the country in which we live in now the, the only part that i really looked up was the bible verse because i know that that shit was important now the bible verse says i got a little note the the jeremiah 11 11 and it is Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. So, bear with me. Here we go. I feel like, in the grand scheme of things, somebody always has it worse than you. Always. And... A part of that movie shows like if you aren't going to be appreciative or thankful um, for the blessings that you have, that shit can be taken away from you like that. 
And for again, they showed a whole representation of somebody else will come and take exactly what you have and be a thousand percent okay with it. Like better than okay with it. Stupid grateful for it. And I think that that's why they show the tether coming in and taking over what they see everybody taking for granted. Um, Cause it's you, it's, Shadow Lupita even says something to the effect of like, you get to go out and you get to feel the sun on your face. Like the simple things that we take for granted. Even when you think about, um, you know, people who are incarcerated, like when they come out, they are 10 times more in touch with the blessings in their life because they've gone without for so long. Um, and something else that, that pairs with the verse is the fact that, so they're pretty much saying we're, we're bringing evil upon them. Hence the tether coming in, they killing everybody or whatever. And I think another place to take this is, so a lot of people, they don't pray until they in trouble. Or they don't go to God or seek God until they in some shit. And so, and that verse is kind of saying like, you know, you do wrong or whatever and I can take all of this from you. And then when you want to come cry to me about it, your cries are going to fall on deaf ears. And that's pretty much like what we see in the movie. Can't nobody help them. Nobody. The cavalry can't help them. Nothing. I will quick break i did not see this being an epidemic i didn't see it being like and that's what it's so predictable no the fuck it's not because i thought that this was going to be an isolated incident with just lupita and her family i did not know this was going to be a worldwide we taking over everything type thing and so again like nobody could stop them and so it's like it got to a certain point where it wasn't nothing nobody could do. And then it's like, oh, now everybody want to cry. Everybody want to be, oh, no, please. Like, But when you had the opportunity to do right and to be grateful and to be thankful, you weren't. So, ain't nobody trying to hear that now. We all know that God will humble you. And um, sometimes you get to a point where you just need to learn a lesson. And that's pretty much like the, the connection that I made between the verse and what I saw happening in the movie. It's like... It's time for y'all to learn a good old lesson. And maybe, moving forward, you'll be a little bit more grateful or thankful. Now, the last thing I want to touch on that I... And I didn't really pay attention to this to the very end of the movie. Which was the fact that I feel like there was a reason that the fun house... What we know as a fun house with all the mirrors and the weird shit that they had went into and got caught up in. If you've noticed, the title of it was Find Yourself. That was what it was called. And to me, that can represent that, like, we get wrapped up in a lot of, like, the glitz and glam and materialistic and, like, stressors and just all time. We get wrapped up in a lot in, in the materials of this world, like we do. Or, again, just in hard, everyday life, and we let that bog us down and put us in very non-productive and frustrating spaces right and so a lot of times people lose themselves whether that be to the materialistic shit of the world or um their faith their morals their values like people lose themselves out here and we see it like you see it you know a motherfucker you was growing up with wasn't like this and then they get a little money or they get a little status or whatever and you don't even know who they are anymore. They don't even know who they are anymore. And so I think it shows like people can lose themselves. People can lose sight of what's truly important. They lose sight of what their core values are, what their foundation is, where they come from. I touched on it earlier. Losing sight of all of that. And so this is a place where you come and you get in touch with the piece of you that is going to appreciate all life has to offer and the part of you that's going to look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Y'all following me? I hope y'all are. Because I, when I was sitting here getting my notes together, I'm like, okay, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. Um, and I wanted to make it 
I wanted to make my points understandable to the fact where I didn't want it to feel like my was like, oh, she reaching. No, I wanted the conclusions in which me and my friend talked about. Because when we were chatting, all of this was just making sense. I wish I could have recorded that conversation in itself. Um, but even after I sat on the conversation, more things came to me this morning when I started thinking about um, things I wanted to make sure that I highlighted in this. Now, again, all of this, I feel like it's open to interpretation. It's not meant to be one strong, central um, plot. It's meant to spark conversation and to inspire you to look at things maybe through a different lens. And so I feel like my interpre interpretation of the movie sends a good message, which is be grateful. Don't only go to God when you need something, when you want to talk to him. Like either you go talk to him all the time when things are good or don't talk to him at all. Okay? And again, if you are somebody that doesn't believe in God, you probably got a completely different interpretation from the movie. But again, you know, I think with the whole verse being there and different bits and pieces, that's what I took from it. I'm a faith-based I'm a faith-based person though. So y'all y'all may have a completely different spiel and that's okay and I think that that's what good creativity brings out of people. It brings out conversation and perspectives and it gives something productive for people to talk about besides bullshit ass drama and all that other unnecessary stuff okay so i hope we, i hope y'all y'all stay with me for that little rag because i know i be going here and there but i tried to connect it and bring it all back together as much as i could hope um Leave me some comments. Last, I want to hear what y'all think. I want I want to know all the perspectives besides going online and reading. Like now that I done got my own opinions out there, I don't even have no interest in reading what everybody else and their mama got to say. But I am interested in having conversations about other things that people noticed or um, symbolism that they felt like they took from the movie or messages that they felt like they took from the movie. So y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day, okay? I'm so glad that I had this thought before I edited this video. Now I can edit this in. Get a load of this because this just came to me. My mind just be spinning. So, a giveaway that we could have picked up on that would have told us that the Lupita tethered shadow was not the actual real Lupita is because notice how all the other duplicates didn't have a voice. Like, they could talk, but nobody knew what they were saying. They couldn't speak. And yet, and yet, Lupita was the one who could talk clearly. Barely, but we could make out words. She could speak English because she was not from that world. And when little Lupita got back through on the other side, they took her to therapy because she wasn't speaking because those people couldn't speak proper English. Do y'all see that? very chosen few of us have a voice okay and I'm not talking about just to speak or to talk but a voice an actual voice to make change to inspire to motivate I'm gonna just leave I'm gonna leave that gym with y'all I'm gonna just let it let that sit down in your spirit okay